Now we will continue with the second part of the problem. The second part of the problem is friction. The maximum gradient it can climb, which is limited by friction. The second is limited by friction. Okay, now let us actually try to find out what is the force of the front wheel. Now, what is the now what is the load coming on the front wheel? So this is the load coming on the front wheel, and this is the load coming on the rear wheel, WF. Okay. Now let us take a moment about the rear wheel and find out this. So I am trying to arrange the rear wheel and trying to find the moments. We know that since this car is under absolute equilibrium, that means it is not actually rolling over like this, which means that the clockwise moments are equal to the anti-clockwise moments. So therefore, let us find out the clockwise moments and equate it to the anti-clockwise moments. Now the clockwise moments here are is WF, which is actually going like this. From this point, it is at a distance of 1.6. So I will write this as WF into 1.6 meters. This is acting clockwise. This is acting clockwise because it is acting like this. About this rear hinge of the wheel. And then one more is the weight of the vehicle is always acting downwards. There are two components. One component of the vehicle weight is acting like this. That is again trying to rotate this in the clockwise direction about this point. So the force into the perpendicular distance is W sin G into two. What is this distance, guys? So W sin theta into what is this distance? So this distance is 0.5 meter. Okay, W sin theta into 0.5 meter. And across this, one force, the second force which is actually W. So this is plus. Guys, this W sin and only this W cos theta is in the opposite direction. So I can actually equate this to W cos theta. Because these two are actually <coughs> clockwise, this is anti-clockwise. This is anti-clockwise. So W cos theta is acting like this. Okay, about, now from this point, what is the distance, guys? Here, it is one meter. So I will equate this to W cos theta into one meter. Okay, so. Basically, what I have done is, I wanted the moment okay, about the rear wheel to be zero, and I have taken sigma mr as zero. Okay, about this point, I have taken and I have got this. So wf, I will try to equate. So I will set this w sin theta on the other side. So w can be taken outside. So cos theta into one meter minus sin theta. Into point five, and this W F, so it got one point six. So here you found out what is the force acting on the front wheel. This equation gives you what is the force acting on the front wheel. You know that the force acting on the front wheel will be less than the force acting on the rear wheel. Sorry, okay, I can't say that because the C V is slightly forward. So definitely, when compared to a a flat road, because of the inclination, weight will definitely shift to rear wheel, and the front wheel weight will be slightly reduced. Okay, we write down the about the weight and weight of the front wheel. Then we know what is the maximum traction that can be produced by a wheel, which is given by the product of coefficient of friction and the weight of the front wheel. So we know one more equation. We know I'm writing we know because I'm not trying to derive here. So the tractive force, the tractive force is the product of weight on the front wheel, weight on the driving wheel basically. But here the weight, the front wheel is the driving wheel multiplied by coefficient of friction mu. So here the weight on the front wheel is how much man? It is given here. So the weight of the front wheel is given here. Multiplied by what is the coefficient of friction? Zero point seven. Zero point seven. So let us now 
So now we have found now we have found out F T, which is the force on the sorry the tractive force. Let us now substitute this. So the tractive force F T is equal to W F. So W into cos theta cos theta multiplied by so one M. Let me remove this because it is one. So everything is in meters. So it is also in meter. Meter, meter, meter. All this meter gets cancelled. So I don't have to use this unit. I just put this to see that the you don't use millimeter above and uh, meter below because the units are cancelling out here. Meter, meter minus. You get a meter that cancels with this. So it is W cos theta minus 0.5 sine theta. 0.5 sine theta divided by 1.6 multiplied by 0.7. So let us substitute this equation. Let us substitute this. Okay. Now we have this equation here, which is actually the the tractive force. <coughs> And now we know that. Okay. Of course, we have substituted here. So what is this tractive force? Is this the forward force or the back backward force? It is the forward force. What is the backward force here? Sin w sine theta. So This is the forward force. This is the forward force, and backward force has to be equated to this to know what what inclination has get applied. So that means if this forward force is more than the backward force, it will it will keep climbing. Suppose if the backward force starts becoming equal to the forward force at one point, that means it stops climbing. So that is the maximum gradient it can climb. ये फॉरवर्ड फोर्स को मतलब बैकवर्ड फोर्स में इक्वेट मर रहा है या वो पॉइंट करने गाड़ी आते तो नहीं निकलता है इनका वी गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा सो वी हैव टू इक्वेट दिस इक्वेशन टू द इक्वेशन ऑफ द बैकवर्ड फोर्स सो बैकवर्ड फोर्स बैकवर्ड फोर्स बैकवर्ड फोर्स इज ड्यू टू व्हाट ड्यू टू ग्रेडिएंट बैकवर्ड फोर्स ड्यू टू ग्रेडिएंट इज w Sin theta. So let us call this as equation two. Let us call this as equation two. Okay, let us call this as equation one. At some instant, the forward force becomes equal to backward force. That is the point at which it stops climbing. At some instant, sorry, sorry, should not call at some instant. At some angle, at some angle, at some gradient angle, the forward force equal to the backward force. At that, in, at that inclination, it stops climbing. So, the forward force equal to W cos theta minus 0.5 sine theta divided by 1.6. Into 0.7. That is the forward force. That should be equated to backward force. That should be equal to to the backward force. Or otherwise, you can write this on the left hand side. So this is a this backward force. This is a forward force. But that will make the equation easier to solve because it is better we have a smaller term on the left hand side. And then divide this throughout by So here also this here this W is missing. So this of course this W was taken outside. Now this W was taken outside. So this W and W can be removed. Here to kill here there is a W. That W and this W can be cancelled out. And we can also divide this whole thing by sine theta. We can divide this whole thing by sine theta. So if I divide the whole thing by sine theta, the left hand side becomes one. And what is cot? No, no, no. What is cos theta divided by sine theta? Cot theta. So cot theta minus 0.5. So the, because this sine theta gets eliminated, so divide by. So what is actually 0.7? No, what is 1.6? Or uh, this 1.6 divided by 0.7? So bring this point seven divided by here. So what is the value? Zero point one. 
2.28. So finally, what this becomes? So if you actually take it to this side, this becomes 2.28 is equal to cot theta minus 0.5. So finally, it becomes cot theta is equal to 2.28 plus 0.5. So 2.78. So theta is equal to sorry. Now you can't solve for cot. There's only sine, cos, and tan. So instead of this, we'll call this as you know that tan theta is equal to one by cot theta. So what we'll do is, if you want tan theta, so put this cot theta below. That is one by two point seven eight. So what is one by two point seven eight? So then finally you get this as theta is equal to tan inverse of one by two point seven eight. seen in these two cases one is the inclination theta is equal to 32.9 this is the gradient a vehicle can climb which is limited by now which is limited by the torque in the engine which means that it can climb up to 32.9 degrees but here it says even if you have so much torque it is useless because this can only climb by 19.78 degrees of inclination because if the inclination becomes more than 19.78, then what would happen? Now what would happen? Why you can't claim you are 19.78? Load. 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 What is this? It started as okay. limited by friction. It, is more than it would be limited by friction, which means that if the angle is more than 19.28, the front wheels will start slipping the front wheels will start slipping because the coefficient of friction is limited to the product of omega into t sorry omega sorry mu into wf so that is the maximum friction it can actually take so this is the forward force it is the forward force that can create it cannot create beyond that suppose if, suppose instead of this 0.7 if it is actually 1.2 this it is impossible then it can generate more forward force suppose if it is a slippery road suppose if it is a ice road for ice road what is actually coefficient of friction instead of the told 0.4 then it becomes 0.4 then you can say that the gradient which can which it can climb goes to around 8 degrees or 7 degrees so basically what you need is this more and more coefficient of friction but coefficient of friction cannot increase more than 1. So there is always a limit for a vehicle to climb which is limited by the wheel, I mean the tire, friction with the tarmac. Okay. Even if you have a very powerful engine, you can't climb. Right now with this data, if it's a front wheel drive, the maximum it can climb is actually 19.78 degree. Suppose if it's an all wheel drive, then we have to add what was the extra forward force which is also created by the rear wheel. Then add these two, that will give you two forward forces. Because one, because one forward force is created by the rear wheel. One, more, one forward force is created by the front wheel. So if you add both of this, if you add both of this and equate it to W sin theta, then definitely you will get a better value of theta. Then the theta can go up to maybe like 40, 45 degrees. Okay? So, these problems can come for uh, 8 to 10 marks. So here you maybe you have to write a comment. What is the comment you will write? You can simply solve the problem and do it. What will you write? The maximum gradient. The maximum gradient it can apply is limited by an engine. Okay, limited by the friction, which is 19.78. 19.78. Though, though because of so much of torque it can climb 32.9 
before it can climb because of the torque it will start slipping so the maximum the maximum inclination it can climb is so you have to give a comment maximum gradability maximum gradability is limited by friction that is is limited by friction maximum gradability is limited by friction which is actually 19.78 degrees 